Hello and welcome back to Revise GCSE History .uk, the number one place for your GCSE history revision pre and exam preparation. This video today is the fourth and final video in the topic of the Mormons and in this video today we're going to be looking at the problems the Mormons faced when they arrived at the Great Salt Lake. So, if you think back to our previous videos, the Mormons have uh, left the east, they've left Nuvu, and decided to cross the plains, uh, go across the Rocky Mountains, and settle at the Great Salt Lake. So what happened when they settled there? Let's have a look. So on arrival at Salt Lake Valley, things didn't get easier straight away. Whoops. Didn't get easier straight away. The Mormons faced further problems which they had to overcome. Life at Salt Lake Valley was hard, the Mormons were tired out and worried uh, from the journey really, they were tired out. Salt Lake uh, was a, an isolated and forsaken spot. There was very little rain there, so that became a problem in itself. But eventually, the Mormons managed to become very successful. In this video, we're going to be looking at why and how they managed to become successful. So, initial problems faced by the Mormons at the Great Salt Lake. This picture here shows Salt Lake City in the US today. And you will notice that I said in the US, not in Mexico. And we're going to be looking at why I said that in a minute. So that's Salt Lake City today. So, there was a lack of water supply at Salt Lake City, so the Mormons had to develop irrigation schemes, and they actually used snow water from the mountains to do this. So you can see here there was mountains at the Great Salt Lake, and snow water from the mountains was used uh, so the Mormons had a water supply. There was also a lack of building materials, uh, there was a scarcity of wood as there weren't many trees and stuff like that, so Mormons had to make their houses from mud bricks. And they called these houses sun-dried houses, and sun-dried houses were houses made out of mud bricks. Uh, there weren't enough people for the community to be self-sufficient, so Brigham Young called uh, Mormons from all over the world to come to Salt Lake City, uh, the Great Salt Lake, sorry, it was called at the time. So, you can remember Brigham Young saying he wanted to live somewhere isolated, where the, mu where the Mormons, where the Mormons could be entirely self-sufficient, not depending on the outside world, and could form their own community. Unfortunately, there weren't enough people to do that initially, so Brigham Young set up something called the Perpetual Immigration Fund, and that offered to pay for their passage and journey of the Mormons uh, to Salt Lake City. I keep saying Salt Lake City. It was the Great Salt Lake at the time. Sorry about that. So the Perpetual Immigration Fund offered to pay for the passage and the travel expenses of the Mormons to the Great Salt Lake. So as a result of the Perpetual Immigration Fund, many Mormons migrated to Salt Lake City. There was no private ownership of land in Salt Lake Valley and the church assigned farmland according to people's needs. So, reaching a political settlement with the US government. The Mormons did actually come into some sort of political conflict with the US government while settled at the Great Salt Lake. So, in 1848, uh, which was when, which by that time the Mormons had settled there, Salt Lake Valley was handed over by Mexico and became Utah, which was territory of the USA. Utah had no access to the sea and no independence, but Brigham Young was allowed to become governor. Uh, so, Utah was the US state, and the Mormons were now living on US territory, and it was no longer territory of Mexico. The Mormons ignored US laws, but really they had to sort of abide by them, because it was US territory. And the Danites, which were sort of an aggressive mob of Mormons, suppressed, whoops, suppressed opposition and attacked US officials. In uh, 1857, the US appointed a non-Mormon governor, who arrived with 2,500 troops. And then we get something called the Mountain Meadow Massacre. You don't need to know too much about this, but you just need to be aware of what it was. So the Mountain Meadow Massacre. Later that year, so in 1857, 140 Gentiles, 140 non-Mormons, were massacred at Mountain Meadows. The Mormons blamed the Indians for this massacre, but others suspected the Mormons. 
the Mormon Church believes that local mo- so the Mormon Church today believes that local Mormons carried out the attack without the knowledge of Brigham Young. So what happened is 140 Gentiles passed through uh, Mormon territory, and the Mormons were always mixing with the Indians, and they basically gave them arms and weapons. And what happened is that uh, these 140 Gentiles that passed through Mormon land were massacred, and uh, news leaked out about this, and many people blamed the Mormons. But the Mormons just said it was the Indians. So that's the Mountain Meadow Massacre. You need to be aware of that. Uh, Utah, the, which was a uh, territory of the US, wasn't allowed to become a state while it practiced polygamy. Um, Brigham Young, the Mormon leader, died in 1866, and the Mormons finally abandoned polygamy, polygamy in 1890. Therefore, Utah was made a state in 1896. Alright, so we've covered everything we need to know for today's video, and we've actually finished the, uh, comes to the end of the topic now on the Mormons. Here are four little questions based on the content of today's video. You might want to pause the video here, have a go at these questions yourselves. If not, carry on watching, we'll do them together. Question one, how did the Mormons overcome the problem of a lack of water supply at Great Salt Lake? Uh, well, they built irrigation systems, irrigation schemes, using snow water from the mountains question two what happened to Salt Lake Valley in 1848 it became US territory it was actually handed over by Mexico. Sorry if my writing is a little scribbly. Uh, question three, what was the Perpetual Immigration Fund? Uh, while it offered to pay the uh, travel expenses to Great Salt Lake for Mormons around the world. God, this is right in his scribbly. And why was Utah finally made a US state in 1896? Well, polygamy was finally abandoned in 1890. So, the US said that it could become an official state. Now, the practice had been abandoned. Okay, there are the answers to the four uh, knowledge recall questions for today's video. Thanks for watching this video today, and that is the end of everything you need to know on the Mormons for the American West. It's worth just saying here that it is so important that you learn the stuff on the Mormons. Uh, I'm really talking about OCR GCSE history, but in OCR GCSE history, the Mormons come up on so many exam papers, it's unreal. I'd be, uh, so really be prepared for the Mormons to come up on your paper, because it's an exam topic that OCR history like bringing up rather a lot. Alright, thanks for watching these videos. If you found them useful, head over to the website, revise gcsehistory.co.uk. On the website, you can view a complete list of revision videos, 70 revision videos, similar to this. You can view a comprehensive range of revision materials, and also find out about the uh, possibility of becoming a member to access revision videos, uh, sorry, exam preparation videos on exam technique and exam advice. And that just costs £5. It's a one-off payment of £5. You can't get better value than that. Thanks for watching this video today, good luck with your studies, and I hope to see you again very soon.